Thank you very much. And Avi and I were co-PIs on, on this study, and we are still co-PIs uh, sometime later. And um, trying to advance the slides. Um, hmm. Sorry, is it the middle bit? Yeah, now I'm doing it, but it's not working. Um, it's stuck. Sorry. Ah, there we are. Okay, so I don't know what I did. Okay, so um, we thank uh, Anna Puga for, from VIEF for organizing uh, this uh, special symposium. So what led to the SHER trial? And these are the um, antenatal clinic statistics for HIV between 1993 and 2001. And you can just see that almost logarithmic increase in uh, HIV in the public antenatal clinics in South Africa. And this was in the face of uh, incredible and non-understandable uh, uh, government opposition to actually doing anything about it and it eventually led to a court order, and eventually um, it happened, but uh, a lot happened along the way that shouldn't have happened, that was preventable. So we can call 1995 to 2002 a time of neglect, no prevention, no treatment, and looking at the numbers of you know, 300,000 uh, women with HIV delivering every year, 20% transmission rate, uh, you can uh, just imagine the, uh, the artfall uh, of that situation and also the wasted, apart from the lives, the wasted resources. Um, so um, everything starts with a case and I wanted to uh, j tell you very briefly about a, a patient who is HIV seropositive and uh, presented with acute upper airway obstruction actually in 1996 when I'd uh, just got back to South Africa and started uh, working on this. And uh, the story was that he uh, uh, presented with acute upper airway obstruction that rapidly uh, went into right heart failure, needed a tracheostomy, and there was, no HI, there was no ARVs, but we managed. Uh, the uh, nurses didn't want to nurse a patient with a tracheostomy in the ICU because of bleeding and blood exposure. And I said, well, you know, let's give the little child some AZT and, you know, it'll lower the infection risk. And they said, fine. And they did it. And dramatically, this little boy recovered and didn't need a tracheostomy and could be uh, sent home uh, in quite good shape, at least for a short time. And that certainly made me think about uh, limited treatment. And at that stage, ART was unaffordable, unobtainable, and maybe we had to resource it. So a pivotal event was the AIDS 2000 uh, conference in Durban, where for the first time, South spoke to North and could actually speak about what was going on with HIV in, uh, in the South. And this actually led to uh, funding. Um, CIPRA, the Comprehensive International Program for Research in AIDS, uh, uh, funded uh, within country uh, projects, two in South Africa and some other projects in high burden settings to develop internal capacity to conduct clinical, clinical trials. Our trial was Cipro SA, and um, it had a structure. Project two was ours, the SHER trial, and there were, uh, was a linking a vaccine trial and some adult trials, and this is what happened. So uh, these are the uh, strong personalities who made it happen, uh, James McIntyre and Glenda Gray. So what were ALT guidelines in those days? So it depended on could you test for CD4 or couldn't you? 
Um, what was the age of the child? Could you do a PCR or couldn't you? Uh, could you do antibodies or, or uh, couldn't you? What was the stage of the child? How sick was the child? Maybe treat. So let's go to the children with HIV early antiretroviral trial, the SURE trial. Planning began in 2001. Before we got ART, there was no early infant diagnosis. Some, or well, certainly for me, had some vague ideas. And uh, the hypothesis uh, that, or the rationale that developed with uh, the help of, of Di Gibb and Ab Babaka was that early limited ART from less than 12 weeks of age followed by interruption would delay immunological and clinical HIV progression. And uh, some of the SURE members you can see in the, the Venice Dusk in 2015. Um, so this was the design of the trial. That was, at that stage, early diagnosis with a good CD4. And at that stage, uh, if your CD4 was less than 25%, you would actually qualify for treatment and we would have a deferred ARV uh, arm. They would start according to concurrent guidelines. We had an uh, ART 40 weeks who would stop, they would start early and stop towards the first birthway, birthday, and ART 96 weeks who would start early and uh, stop more or less at the second birthday, and we would then monitor off treatment uh, and look at CD4 and clinical with a quite a long follow-up. So that was the basic design of, of SURE. So it's um, two arms had immediate or early treatment and uh, stopping treatment. Two points about the baseline characteristics. First is that on the whole, uh, uh, the ART was started in the early groups at around about seven weeks of age and all had really high viral loads. So, um, but they were all relatively asymptomatic with good CD4 counts. So the first year and a bit of the study was really early versus deferred therapy. And um, an interim analysis showed a, a, a huge difference in mortality. So this was a, a, a outcome measured in death, early having 4% and deferred having 16% and this leading to uh, changes in ALV guidelines worldwide and eventually even uh, taken you know, the same principle for adults, um, adults um, uh, guidelines. So what was happening in the meantime is HIV cure. And this is the uh, seminal paper on the first patient who had HIV cleared from the body uh, after a second uh, bone marrow transplant for resistant acute myeloid leukemia and was a, a pivotal moment. So, um, you know, of course that was happening at the same time, but the important point is that to confirm HIV cure, you've got to stop antiretroviral therapy. So that was certainly a lesson we learned from this uh, pivotal study. And let's go back to the SURE trial. It continued for six years and concluded in 2011. And uh, the early data that or findings maintained right throughout the trial, that, trial, that even at six years on, on study, the early, both early interrupted arms did better than the deferred continuous arm. Children also stopped treatment and they restarted treatment and uh, according to protocol, and that went uh, reasonably well. Meanwhile, post-treatment control after early ART had been described. The most famous, I guess, is the adult Visconti cohort, where initially five of 32 uh, adults who started treatment early during acute HIV uh, and after a couple of years stopped treatment controlled replication. We have the Mississippi baby was published in 2013, a baby treated uh, at 30 hours of life on full triple therapy who had remission for quite a long time. And the French adolescent described in 2016 from this Visconti cohort who um, was also uh, found at about 12 years of age controlling HIV off treatment for about six years. So, um, 
So what happened there? So you know, so we in fact looked at um, um, our patients, and it was uh, we eventually found one of our children who had been randomised to the ART 40 weeks had no viral rebound for almost nine years, and um, so this is the patient, and you can see that. Uh, in a, in a randomized trial had post-treatment control. We then looked at rebound and found that most, uh, we had stored samples and we found that even though most uh, of, of the children in Shur rebounded within two months, around about 70%, uh, around about 30% didn't. And there's the ca uh, case uh, study again. So I wanted to uh, just talk about some other contributions of Shur. Firstly, looking at reservoir immunology and antibodies, that early ART reduced the reservoir. We could show that there was no evidence of evolution in ART-suppressed children for seven to nine years, but we could find intact provirus that could divide after seven to nine years. We also found that uh, there was loss of antibody. We found that thanks to the thymus, CD4 counts recovered, and also long suppressive ART is key to DNA reduction, and that high CD8s at baseline also uh, lead or associated with reservoir reduction, suggesting an immunological control. So uh, we established early ART, and that ART interruption was reasonably well tolerated. We've, um, we found the reservoir reduces, we found a controller, and that the reservoir um, persists. And I won't talk about the CNS, and of course we uh, got to meet some wonderful young people. Uh, many, many acknowledgements, far more than I can fit into the slide. Want to just acknowledge Nigel Klein, who, uh, whose uh, vision was uh, helped with some of the immunology and virology that I've just listed on the two slides back. And Ed Handelsman, a pivotal per, uh, medical officer in the um, NIAID, who also uh, helped us shepherd this uh, trial through. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.